Good afternoon, everyone. It's Eric Amwakabwedu coming all the way from the United Kingdom, UK, and it's African Talks with Eric. Everything we do is all about African art. So African Art Talks with Eric is the program. I'm just going to put the music back on so that you can all do me a huge favor, massive favor, by sharing the video, let it reach all your friends far and wide across the world so that we can all have a fantastic chat about African art. And you know me, I bring people from all over the world that have experience in African art who are international. So the topics we bring will educate you, you will empower you, will let you reach within the depth of your soul to learn about African art and also to practice it. So as I said, I'm going to put the video back on, but do me a favor, share the link, share the link, share the link.
Yes, it's me again. It's Eric Amwaka Bwedu. And tonight's uh, show is almost four o'clock in the UK. It's actually four o'clock in the UK, isn't it? Three o'clock in Ghana. So it's evening time. Wherever you are across the world, I'm so happy to come your way. And as I said, it's African Talks with Eric. And today we're going to continue from what we started last week. But before we bring the guest on, and you already know his name already, his name is Jonathan Quedri Agri. Before I bring him on, I am going to talk a little bit about African art, because as I said, we have to educate ourselves about our story to be able to know where we are going. So I tend to do bits of education, and for the past four weeks, or for the past three weeks, I've been, today is the fourth week, I've been talking about the Adinkra symbols, Adinkra symbols. So I'll carry on with the Adinkra symbols so that we learn more about our culture. We learn more about these signs. These are very complex signs in the African um, art market. And I would like us to talk a bit more about it, study each one of them. So I've taken each one at a time, talking about the history of it, where it came from, and where we're going with it. So the Edinkra symbols, and I'll give you a bit of a summary for the benefit of those who've just joined us today. Now, it's a symbol that was invented in the Bono region of Ghana by a king called King Nanakojo Ajman Edinkra, he was king in 1810 to 1820. And he came up with these symbols, beautiful ones, and was taught all over in uh, the Bono region in Ghana. But when the Ashantis conquered the, the Bono people, they actually made the king teach them how to you know, do these symbols. And initially they were worn by the kings, but as time went on, it became the norm to wear Edinkra symbols as a cloth. So today, we are going to pick up one of the Dinkra symbols to talk about it. And today's one is called the fern, Aya, in the Ashanti Akan language, is Aya, and is the fern. When you look at the signage or the symbol over there, it looks like the fern of a tree. Now, we all know that the fern, of, or, 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 the fern is a very resourceful type of tree, and it grows in very difficult places. Wherever this seed drops, it will grow. Whether near the rock, whether in hard places, it will still grow. So this symbol signifies the, the endurance and resourcefulness of the Akan people. The endurance and the resourcefulness of the Akan people. The fan, Lord, when an individual wears this piece of cloth, it shows you that they can withstand all the adversities of life. And then they are able to outlast difficulty. So it's really good to know that this symbol is now trending. Sometimes people use it even as earrings and they wear them on t-shirts. They use it for all sorts of things. The African cloth or the Edinkra cloth is now become I mean, very, very popular even in the Western world. But let's learn a little bit about how it's produced. The African cloth or the Adinkra cloth, to be specific, is produced currently in Intonso, which is near Kumase. And they are specialists in producing this thing. What they do is they cut these shapes out of calabash. So on the left-hand side, you can see that there are the Adinkra symbols on the left, which has been cut out of calabash. And calabash is a piece of fruit, but the sea or the gore is what we use either for drinking water or our palm wine or anything, or even using it to create this as a Dimkra symbol. The way they do it is that when they've got the symbol, they also prepare the ink within which to imprint the symbols on a piece of cloth. And the ink is got from the bark of trees. So they prepare soaking all these barks of trees and they boil it. They boil it up. They soak it, boil it up make sure that it's heated to a certain degree, and then they leave it to dry over a period of time. Now, over that period of time, this liquid or the darkened liquid begins to thicken, and this forms the basis of the, the, the ink that they use to imprint on the piece of cloth. So in the middle, you've got a gentleman proudly wearing the Adinkra symbol on a piece of Kunti cloth, and this is the rich culture that we've got in Ghana specifically to do with the Akan people. So rich, so beautiful, so colorful. So next time, if you see someone wearing this Adinkra cloth, then you know where it came from. 
we manufactured the, the actual tools for the symbol, as well as we created the symbol ourselves, dating back to 1810. It's beautiful. Can't you see it? So that is a bit of our education right there. So guys, I'm taking you back history lane, and that is a bit about the Dinkra symbol. Do me a favor and share the video because we're going to have a lot more people. Feel free to also comment in there as we've got Gertrude Amar saying that it's very beautiful. So Gertrude Amar says that our history is beautiful. Also feel free to comment in there and I'll be more than happy to put your comment there. I'll also open the phone lines. So if you're ready to ask a question, you, you're ready to ask my guest a question, the number to call on is plus 44, that's 044 And I'll repeat, it's 44 So there you go. There you go. Let me now go straight into today's program and bring my special guest on today. So we have got a really good gentleman, a good friend of mine, Jonathan Quadri Agri. Jonathan Quadri Agri was with me uh, last week, and he's going to join me today as well. So let me bring Jonathan right on screen right now. Hey, Jonathan, how you doing? I'm fine, Daniel. Good, 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 good. It's good to hear from you again. It's really good to hear from you again. I'm just going to put your picture back Same on here. so that we talk about all things art, all things art. So last week, for those of you who were not with us, Jonathan gave us a bit of a background about how he started as a watercolorist in Ghana. And he gave us a lot of history. I showed some of his artworks, which I'll be repeating. I'll be showing it again because I can't afford not to show it to my audience. And today we'd like to delve more because the internet last week wasn't great. But today I'd like us to really delve into who Jonathan is and how we can actually get to know how he got to where he is today. Because bros, sisters, brothers, my friends, Jonathan is an international watercolorist. Where his artwork has taken him to, I've not been there before. I'm telling you, the gift that you've got will bring you before kings and queens. And he'll bring you before presidents. So, Jonathan, welcome once again. Thank you very much. Good, 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 good. So, let's take it from watercolor. Um, can you let me show your video again? And I'm going to show a bit of your work so that those who were not with us last week will really appreciate the beautiful work that you've been doing. So, bear with me as I show Jonathan's video again, him in action.
Isn't it so beautiful? That is uh, uh, Jonathan at work. And so can you talk a bit about watercolor, the process, how you actually, even for the benefit of those who joined, how you even got to choose watercolor over acrylic, over oil, over pastels, over pencils, pen, all the medium that we can use to create art. Why did you choose to go watercolor? Yeah, uh, I decided to go more into watercolor because uh, when I was out of secondary school, after finishing secondary school, I was studying the the Ghanaian political um, art landscape. So okay. I realized that people are not diversity enough. They are all doing acrylic, oils, the pencils yes. were not so much. So I decided to go more into watercolor that when people were not paying much attention uh, okay. to watercolor. Uh, so I was wondering that the white people or the foreigners are doing it more to record places that they have been to and they go out to do uh, live paintings with watercolor. So what is happening that in Ghana or in Africa, we, we are not doing it by the way the, That's true. the white people so I decided to take the challenge upon myself that I'm also going to tow in that line to record the Ghanaian uh, scenes in life okay. scale because I will be happy that a foreigner comes into the country to do what we can do it uh, ourselves. So yes. that those were some of the things that pushed me to uh, dive more into watercolor. So okay. initially it was a it was a bit tough because one the materials are not readily available here. Yes. Most of the shops don't uh, bring them in. Also, there are not much books on watercolor to mm. to read, and uh, uh, lack of uh, the exposure of it also is not there. So it's not uh, yes. I was uh, surrounded by a lot of challenges when I decided to go on this journey of watercolor but wow. beyond all of this i decided that i'm going to do it and i'll take it uh, very far so uh, i was self-motivated largely okay. and then with the help of the internet i was able to uh, with, with the web help of the internet i was able to connect with people i was able to study uh, some of the techniques on watercolor and then through some help of uh, friends who lives in abroad i was able yes. to get uh, some materials on watercolor to help me to to practice so that is where i mentioned some of my friends uh, nancy hobby of uh, triple jump studio Okay. And uh and T Tibado in Canada and some few other friends that I have who started to support me by sending me the watercolor materials whilst I'm in Ghana here. So I look beyond the borders for my art and and, and as you mentioned, if I may just come in here, that was all through the power of the internet. Yes. Because, because you didn't know been, anyone in Canada at that time, but you connected. I connected, yes. Yeah. Wow. So I was able to use uh, some of the friends I've made uh, to get the materials in because that's more important than anything that I needed at that time. You know. So with the help of these people I've mentioned, uh, Triple Jump Studio, that's uh, Nancy Hobie, and then uh, uh, Antibado in Canada. Yes. Yeah, these are all people and maybe sometimes you yourself also one way or the other have helped me uh in getting one thing or the other down <laughs> here in africa yes and i'm very much grateful to uh, uh for helping me uh, acquiring those materials those times when i when i needed help most definitely and, uh, that is how i was able to use the internet to learn to connect and to to gather the resources for watercolor and then also constant practice uh, in in order to to master it because uh, watercolor can be very very uh, difficult in a way that you need to learn everything about you it. need to. there's no short you need to but you just need to learn, learn everything about it 
from, That's right. from the kind of brushes to, to the paint to to the paper and to the the technique you just yeah. need to master everything you cannot take anything for granted in watercolor and so it also doesn't allow so many mistakes that's true that's true let me stop you i'll pause you right there we'll come back to the the mastering aspect of it but i would like to show our audience what he's talking about what he says that he's mastered the watercolor and can now use it to the extent that the international community has really accepted him um all the way from let's say china to turkey to france to all over the world let me show you what he's made up of now look at him right there um jonathan each picture that i'm going to show please talk us through what's going on there okay uh the one on the left uh, is a scene from jamestown one of my favorite uh, painting location in accra Okay. Uh, because it's a fishing community and I love the, the environment so much. But unfortunately, we are losing that aspect. So I'm happy to be, to be able to record uh, some of the scenes from the stuff that got demolished. Uh, the other one on the right, at that time, I've started to work on large scale watercolor paper because we, even though I'm in Africa or Ghana here, uh, people believe that watercolors are usually very small uh, to make with a small brush. But at the picture on the right, I started to do large scale, uh, 70 by 100 and sizes of watercolor to set the pace that this is how far I've come with watercolor. And that's uh, right. It can even get bigger and bigger. People got amazed when they started to see a larger size of watercolor and being made right here in in ghana in ghana yeah. and, so and i remember i remember when i was growing up watercolor watercolorist used to do let's say the biggest was a3 for instance they don't normally do um, yes. much bigger sizes than you do and wh why is that yes. so uh you know well watercolor usually is for for plain and uh, going uh, outdoor. Initially, okay. the history of watercolor is uh, is a uh, it's a it's a medium for sketching That's for true. the oil painters in the old yes. in the old day. So it wasn't meant to be a, a medium on each a supplementary media that supports oils. True. So when the oil painters are going on a trip, paint, then they carry a very small. Uh, watercolor palette that yeah. the small tubes yeah. with a small brush and a small paper so it allows them to do a quick uh, sketches so when they get back to the studio then they do a larger version of it because oil will not allow them to that comfort that watercolor allows because it drives very fast the, the things are very easy to to package and travel with it for plain air yes. so until in the late uh, 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 80s that watercolor now started to gain itself as an independent uh, medium, basically. Medium as That's a it. freedom yes. from, from being oil. So it's the last one of almost all the medium that we know. Oh, okay. So wow. everything about it is so special. Yes. Yeah. It's so special. And... When it comes to mastering it, what, what actually do you have to do? I know that you started talking about the fact that you need to practice, practice, practice. Is that the only thing? Because <laughs> I quite remember that I started using watercolor and I failed miserably. So I stuck to my acrylic and I mentioned that last week. But look at the pictures on the screen. All viewers, let me have your comments on how you feel about these pictures. They are so detailed. I mean, look at the waves on, on, on the, of the sea, for instance. How do you achieve such complexity? Well, aside uh, being good with uh, watercolor, and aside the, the practicing uh, as a, with watercolors, um, you need to understand almost everything. Okay. In order to master a watercolor, to the point that when you draw, you you, saw, you even see the finished work even in advance. That is how far watercolor goes which we call visualization, ability to see uh, beyond the existing uh, 
circumstances. Yes. So you need to work down water color to the point that if you put the water on the paper, you sh you should know what is going to happen next in advance, because it does not allow room for uh, mistakes. For mistakes. Yes. So you should you should be far ahead, which we call visualization, ability to see beyond the current circumstances. Okay. Yeah. So you you need to understand the tools. You need to understand the materials you are you are using, and then thoughts you are going to achieve. So if you are able to understand all of this, then it means you have gotten to the point that you are nearing your mastering of watercolor and ability mm. to summarize your your painting process. That even if it is one stroke you know that you have uh, you are done and you are able to defend what because sometimes you leave about 40 percent of the paper untouched wow and these are all part of screen and understanding yes some people may leave even about uh more than 50 percent of the untouched. paper untouched yes so this is to show you how well you you have come or you understand uh watercolor that technique yes yeah yes. and every everybody is able to uh, master watercolor in their own way. In, in their own way, okay. In, yes, it's very difficult uh, copying somebody. You, you have your own uh, voice or style or technique in, in handling watercolor. And it is all accepted because watercolor is still growing and it has no boundary of any limitation that, oh, it should be tight or it should be okay. loose. Yes. It should be very, very dated. No, there's no rule per se. It has given all the rooms for to explore. So what I can gather is that you know you go through a lot of planning in advance of you yeah. actually yeah. putting the brush on, on the paper. Because in your head, as you mentioned, visualization for every yeah. artist is key. You need to know the end product before you even start painting. Yeah. So in your head, you know exactly where the brush is going to touch, the effect the brush will even make, yeah. and, and then all the way through yeah. to finishing finish yes great great that's yes. really good i'm going to show more of your paintings and we'll talk okay. through them and then we'll delve into the actual challenges that you faced as an african watercolor artist so basically you, you you've gone into doing figure drawings uh figure paintings and as you mentioned last week that's one of your yes. areas that you specialize in as well yes now let's yes. talk about the concept of why you chose to capture how the daily lives of women are in Ghana. Some women are in Ghana. Oh, well, I'm, I'm really fascinated by what I see in my uh, environment. And these are some of the things that are very common growing up that in people's leisure activities, you see a mother and daughter, they are plating their, their hair. So, mm. I kind of find them very fascinating when I come across them uh, to document them uh, this way in, in watercolor. Yeah, that's so that is why uh, I have subjects like this in, in, in watercolor. And as I said, my main interest is figure and light. Figure and light. And then we've got the African cloth that light. you've actually painted very beautifully in this portrait of the fisherman's wife. I remember last week you told us that you did a series of fisherman's yeah. wife because you go to Jamestown a lot. Jamestown, for those of you who don't know, is a fishing yeah. community in Ghana. And because of developments in Ghana, it's been, some parts are being stripped off. And Jonathan is an artist who's been able to capture our history very beautifully. So why did you incorporate bits of our Africanness in this? In terms of the patterns and the details in, in the in the head here. Yes, uh, I we need them to showcase what we have in, in Africa or, or Ghana. So these are part of our daily element, which I can take out because these are part of the things that defines us as Africans or the or Ghanaians. That is well true. Well, I, I always say that we yeah. need to tell our own story, isn't it? If we leave it to someone yeah, else, yeah. they would depict us differently. Yeah. So let's say if um, a foreigner or the Western world is trying to paint 
an African scene, they will see it from their perspective. So it's good that, yeah, and yeah. this is educating all of, of, of us as African artists, that we should tell our own story exactly as it is. Even if we are not imagining things, it should be from our perspectives. This is what we are able to preserve, the way we used to dress back in those days. Let's say in future, in, in 50 years time, if an African picks one of our paintings, he should be able to know how we used to dress in those days. Yes, we are in a better position to tell our own story than anybody telling my story for me. You know, Definitely. so as I live in Ghana and Africa here, I should know more than any anybody coming in to come and tell me how my environment is or what I see in my environment because I, I'm the living testimony of uh, what I what this is my life here. That's and it. I should be able to tell it better to the outside world, not the outside world coming to tell me how I should live in Africa. Mm, mm. Yeah, that's very well so said. I did uh, it with patterns to show what, yes, yeah. what we have as Africans. So let, let's move the conversation to yeah. the challenges that we face as African artists because people take it for granted. I mean, when I first came to the UK, I remember going to an art shop and I just grabbed whatever colors I could get because back in Ghana, I was struggling to even get... I remember my very first watercolor that I got was picked up from the rubbish dump. Somebody had oh, dumped God. it on the rubbish uh, dump, refuse dump, and I picked it up, came home, and started just trying out. At the age of about six, you know, Ghana, after school, we go out to play. Okay. And yeah. that is where I found this material. Now, throughout okay. my journey as an artist in Ghana, every single paint that I had, I treasured it so much because I didn't know where the next paint was coming from. Till I came to the UK and it was like, every corner you turn, there's an art shop. Different, different brands, different um, art shop, private ones, much bigger ones. And when I enter into there, it's like a kid in a candy store. I, I want to sleep in those art shops. So tell us the challenges. I know about it, you know about it, but let's let the world know some of the challenges that we face as African artists. Well, we, we lack good quality uh, materials mm. over, over here. Also, I will blame the, the two sides. Okay. Uh, the artist sometimes wants to compromise on the kind of materials they want. So it doesn't push the, the, the suppliers to go in for, let's say, the best. You, you know, because if you go, we all agree to go to a particular shop and request for a particular product, it will yeah. force the suppliers to get that particular. But sometimes we, the artists, compromise. And also, uh, when we start doing that, the suppliers will not give us what we really need. I remember I went to one of the art shops in, in Accra here, and I wanted the uh, I want a color paper. Okay. Uh, I was told that when they bring it in, people are not coming to to buy because yes. there, were, there are few watercolor people in ghana so these are all some of the challenges if we have large audience who are interested in watercolor i'm sure the art shops will also bring in more of the professional materials same goes for other uh materials as well. As, well, as well yes, yes. yes. you yes. know now and that, that's very, very true. And I was going to go there because you opened up a whole can of worms. When it comes to materials, it's not just the artist and it's not just the supplier, but it's a combination of both. And it even includes the customer as well, the person who will be buying the art because yes. it opens us into the area of Africans not really patronizing art, not appreciating art enough to buy it. And therefore, the artist at the end of the day doesn't have the enough capital because they, his artworks yes. are not patronized, because it, that ends up yes. with him not having enough money to go and buy the material. Mm -hmm. So yes. he compromises. Yes, he compromises on the quality of that material because he hasn't got enough yeah. money. And then when it comes yes. to the supplier side, the one who is selling the material will say, "Okay, when I bring in good qualities, they don't even buy it anyway. So why bother?" They buy it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So he also brings in inferior uh, products. Right. Product, yeah. which ultimately yeah. ends up in the customer not getting a quality product so it's a, it's a vicious circle yes yeah, yes yeah and 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 it's a circle. Yeah. yes so taking it from that point of view 
how can we overcome this challenge? Because it's a huge challenge, basically. Come again, please. I was going to say the internet broke a, a little bit there, but I was, I'm saying that how can we up, uh, overcome this challenge whereby the artists will be able to go and confidently buy good materials? First of all, the supplier will bring a good material. The artist will buy that good material, produce a good quality artwork, and then the customer will have an appreciation of that artwork that is being produced so that they will buy it and put money in the pocket of the African artist. How do we stop um, this cycle of inferiority in the in in what we do? Uh, it's it's a both way education. We, we the artist needs to give feedback to the uh, the supplier. Yes. That hey, we don't like this particular brand, and I, it's kind of uh, 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 damage my work. That's right. It. The quality of that so work. Yes. Is the feedback we the artist needs to give because sometimes the suppliers they themselves are not artists and they are not even and they don't know all they want is their money no yes yeah <laughs> so they they may not really understand what they are even selling to you because they are not they may not necessarily be an artist themselves they are only just yes. business uh, people so we the artists can also have to educate them that we like this particular brand or this particular product is very good so when you are bringing in the goods we like this specific product even though we know it is expensive but we the artists if we buy it expensively the same way we have to also sell the paintings uh expensive at an expensive so price expensive to understand. yes because i remember uh, in france i mostly yeah. asked what kind of watercolor paper or product do i use Okay. So if I tell them I use arch watercolor paper, they are confident about it that I'm not yes. giving them something inferior from inferior. Africa because these are uh, world international branded accepted paper for for watercolor. For watercolor. That's right. Yes. So they are confident that, and it is shown there in the watermark that this is arch watercolor paper. So yes. I'm not lying. Yes. So that way they know what they are they are buying that. It's a good material that the art issues. So if you even if it is a little expensive, they are okay to invest their money in it. So the cycle, we all need to educate themselves. Also, if the, the supplier is a kind of artist that knows what is good and brings it into the market, he yes. or she can also educate the artist that hey, as a as an, a professional artist, quality materials to help you to to do a better work that you can even sell it at a good price a good price because people buy oil paint expensively people buy when they know that the, the materials you are using is professional they yes. are confident about about it you know but Definitely. when they are not sure i remember uh, a friend sold a painting to someone who took it to the us and by the time they got to the, the painting are stuck look on, at on that. the two and look at that. He has to go back for restoration because of poor quality oh, uh, materials used. So next time, when the person is coming to buy a painting, he will find it. So the line is breaking a little bit there, but bear with us. Yes, a bit uh, difficult. Uh, pain using. When you are as a professional uh, artist, not just only a watercolor uh, artist, but that is very true. you are that using is very, very important. Yes. So, for those of us who didn't hear the latter bit of what Jonathan said, he was saying that as an artist, not just a watercolorist, uh, colorist, what you should do is aim to get professional materials. Let it go for the brands that are good so that when you sell your work internationally, it will be well known brands that your customers already know in the international market so that they appreciate what you do and they will buy into it because they are already using it here already i think yes. another yes. thing that needs to be addressed is education of the the education of the african market to appreciate the role of art in our market because art is not just the aesthetic thing that you just see there are deeper meanings to what we paint as an artist we pour our soul into the messages that we're trying to convey so our art can bring joy, it can bring sorrow, it can bring so many emotions 
and it's like a piece of music it's a piece of us yeah we yeah. can also solve international issues we can solve national issues even with our piece of work so if we are able to educate the, the masses the african individual of the importance of art in society then i think they'll be much more educated to part with their money to buy the art which will give us as artists the money to go and buy good materials so yeah. that sort of education should happen both ways as well yeah. Right. Yes, that's yes. very very yeah. true. Yeah. How, how did you personally overcome this challenge of materials and having the lack of it? I know you traveled and a lot. You got people to bring you some, but how did you? How have you consistently kept this up? Yeah, um, you know the the material I understand is is a bit challenging here, but I always look beyond the borders, even though okay. I'm in Ghana, but I don't limit myself here uh the world is open up to me and i yes. try to connect so what i do is that uh when i travel uh i use almost one of my luggage for art material especially materials i like that the paper yes so it kind of helped me to bring in the materials especially the paper that i i i used and yeah. i've been fortunate enough that i have a full sponsorship for my paint that i use which is a uh, machine gold so for almost many years now i don't buy uh watercolor paint wow so the company supplies it to me um, if you don't mind i can show you the brand i want to see everything jonathan i want to really delve into how <laughs> you do things <laughs> because you never you never know oh that's amazing you never know who is listening and you are yeah. an inspiration to many of the young ones who are coming up to be able to get a company to sponsor your materials and therefore yeah. you don't buy paints that is amazing it's the first time i've heard it yeah okay. so for, i don't remember the last time i bought paint in watercolor wow. so this is fully sponsored by mission Group in south korea in south and korea the, the tablet the tablet type yes and also they have the the tube type. Yes. Well, this is how it looks like. Okay. Yeah. And this is top quality, you know, paint yes. from South right. Korea. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I have it in about two boxes uh, here. So when I'm running out, I just ask them to to bring in more for me, and Look I also that. use it to 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 promote them. As, as well so as i've been well. fortunate on that angle so the next thing i'm working on now is uh the watercolor paper as well so that okay you can I get also give it out to, to to help students as well it's not just okay i keep it out for me because i want people to also um learn the the watercolors and so far i have few students who are doing well that i'm hoping to also promote them uh, when i get the the chance to that to is really them. good that and is really good. I, and initially, I promoted a few of the Ghanaian artists who were ready at that time. Uh, I remember Peter Schropp uh, okay. from University of Education, and then uh, Augustine Goka, who was already far a professional watercolor artist before I started. He too have been able to introduce them to the International uh, Watercolor Society that they are now members also so basically uh when i travel is when i bring in the watercolor uh paper so i have to use one of my luggage you know every passenger is entitled to two free uh luggage yeah. so depending on which i, I like <laughs> one to to uh, get Jonathan will be coming in very shortly. Yeah. The internet is breaking up. Jonathan, yeah, can you repeat the last the last sentence? You are, you are taking yeah. So now I'll be able to bring uh, a large watercolor paper road, which I okay. can show you in a minute. Okay. Yeah. Feel free. Show us. Yeah. So. Wow. This is how it is. Yeah, and the size is. Uh, 113 centimeters by 914 centimeters this, almost one this is huge. this yes. is huge yeah yes and 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 you know i i began by saying that your gifts bring you before kings and queens now because of the gifts and the hard work that you put 
into your games. You've been able to reach as far as South Korea, where they are bringing you materials for free. Now, yeah, these yeah. are some of the doors that if you actually, and I'm educating everyone here, we are talking about how you can put in hard work. Even if you are not an artist, you are a creative. I would long to encourage you to put in the effort, the hours that it takes. They say that to be yeah. a specialist in an area, you should put in at least 10,000 hours of your time over a period of time. Jonathan has paid his dues, and now he has sponsorship from watercolor uh, companies who are sending him watercolors for free, and he's working on the, on the paper as well. Same goes for the brushes as well. Uh, there's this company that supported me, uh, Escoda in Spain. Escoda, uh, Escoda, yes, okay. Yes, yeah. So they also support me when I needed brushes. Man, I mean, I mean, you're doing well. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Your deal, well, well done, well done, well done. I was done. actually well going to uh, visit their their company when I went to Europe, but unfortunately okay. the schedule was so much I couldn't go to Barcelona from Madrid at that time. I needed to rush back home. So I, I will I'm speak to you when I'm, when I'm next in Barcelona. I'll be going there to get you something. Yeah, Don't worry. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. I'll, 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 because I'm much closer to Spain. You know, oh, okay. if, when I'm next in Barcelona, I'll speak to you so that I can sure. go there. And then just speak sure. to them, and then I can get the things and get it over to you. Thank you very much, Jerry. This is, this is what it's all about, guys. When it comes to us as artists and creatives, or in any business, as Africans, I want us to stand up for each other. I want us to support each other in whatever we do. There's no point in just, you know, doing it just for yourself. As Jonathan mentioned, he is teaching the young ones watercolor. He's even giving us some of the free stuff that he gets for other watercolors who are coming after him to be, you know, good at that craft because he had yeah. to go through, isn't it? Yes, yeah. So which, yes. which do you... The best way we can raise Africa is to support each other. Is to support each other. Yeah. yeah. So do you, do you visit schools and, and teach? Can you mention some of the schools that you already go to? Yes. Uh, I saw that coming uh, many years ago that a time will come that... I'll be going to different schools. So okay. I wasn't surprised when the first invitation came from uh, Kwabinya Senior Secondary School, which is not far from, from where I where I live, I just okay. about ten, five minutes or 10 minutes drive. So, uh, you know, most of the, from my uh, University of Education where I studied, uh, yes. most of the, the my colleagues and juniors, they all like me. So it made it easier for them when they went back to the teaching field to be inviting me. The first school I did was Esaman Kese. Esaman uh, Kese. Yeah. So followed by uh, Kwabenya Senior High School. So yes. later, uh, Achimota Secondary School, where I did wow. my uh, internship uh, yeah. as a young graduate teacher. They also invited me. And then followed by Accra, uh, Accra High School. Wow. Also me. And I've received a few other invitations outside uh, Accra that uh, I very soon I'll be going to educate them. So the school touring thing happened when my juniors from the University of Education uh, started calling up upon me that I should come. And I do this uh, for free because I'm not, I want people to. Uh, learn the art and take it yes. as far as they, they can so it's that's not, right uh, yeah it's from my free will that I well done that. well done for saying that you do it for free i'm not saying that everyone will do it for free but when you've got to the stage where you want to really get the message out there um, initially there's no point you charge because you like people to hear the word first educate them and then if people want to really appreciate you they can appreciate you in whichever way they want yeah, so right now what I'm also doing is uh, I'm working on moving to a new studio whereby I think I told you this uh, when you came to Ghana also, that I'm um, building a place that people can come and stay right. And so far, so good. I'm almost about 80% done with the first phase of that project. Of that project. So that to, uh, people who are interested can always come over to read the books I've gathered over the years yes. on watercolor and, and on art. Students and anyone interested in learning can come over to my residence and, okay. and just just have 
free education on art. So that's well done, very well done. A question has just come in from uh, one of my viewers, Getrud Amar, and Getrud is saying, "How do you make your income? Because if you're going to <laughs> if you're going to go to the schools for free, give them for free, and all that, how do you make an income as an artist?" Uh, my income comes basically from selling uh, paintings and also doing commission. And by God's grace, anytime I travel for exhibitions abroad, I'm able to sell uh, a lot of paintings that I'm far okay. And also I get big commission and I have agent in China right. that represents me that sells my work. And recently I have the Canadian uh, gallery, hashtag gallery that made me one of their stable artists as well so the and also, artist. yes and also in ghana also uh i sell my paintings through artist alliance gallery uh nobuki foundation veg gallery yes these so are the three main all galleries. these are yes so, very prestigious yes, galleries. So all these are, uh, i'm okay with all of this that i get to sell my paintings so we thank god and that's what a senior of mine has said Baku Ayaka Debra says you know, by selling their beautiful artworks. Basically, that's what brings in the income. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I don't need to worry about that. That's right. And and the thing with art is that, you know, when you do things out of passion, the kind of work that comes out is totally different from people who are always commercializing their artwork. You know, you, yes. you, you, you actually do it from your spirit and you do yes. it from what God has given you. And those type of artworks are much more long lasting than just doing a commercial piece. Commercial, just to sell. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So that's yeah. really, really good. Well done. Very well done. Thank you. Very well Thank done. You. Any more questions? I'd like to take as many questions for Jonathan because this is the second week that I've got Jonathan here for. And I'd like all of you to just learn from Jonathan because I'm going to show you a picture right here and I will talk about it. So this is, and if I can find it, this is Jonathan in China. I showed that last week, but on the left-hand side, Jonathan said, I think it was your first time in China, wasn't it? Yeah, that was my, my first time in China. Um, I was invited by the Ch Qingdao Art Museum, where they collected four of my paintings for their permanent uh, national museum, and they paid quite a huge amount of money. It was an offer, so I was very happy uh, wow. with that amount of money I got. So it, the picture on the left uh, was the opening ceremony of that uh, exhibition in 2014. Okay. So uh, the catalog that featured uh, my paintings and other artists, the students comes to me for autograph. Uh, to sign that catalog. Their, their, uh, yes, yeah. So the second one in the middle was my second time in China. At that time, I've gotten an agent who works uh, for me uh, in China, the reinterpretation uh, program. Okay. So he invited me to um, Anshan Noma University for right. an exhibition with other international artists. So at that in that picture, I was to give the opening uh, speech on behalf of the invited international artist so that was what i was giving on stage and the picture on the right which is the third one uh the man on the on the right from my screen is called on kim song he okay. is the first artist i saw his work way back in about 2008 there about that i got inspired to follow him and I was amazed to see the kind of work he was doing in mm. watercolor. So it was a privilege for me to have the chance to meet him for the first time in Turkey when he was also invited by the international watercolor artist. Right. Same. And then the other one, the Chinese man is called Li Yu, who is also one of the, uh, the finest Chinese watercolorists uh, in China. So it was a privilege for me at a young age to have the chance to meet these great masters that have inspired me over the years. Same as uh, the other Chinese artist, Master Guan, who three years ago. So it's a privilege yeah. to 
you know, be able to walk among the giants in the art field. And it's all due to the talents that you brought to the table, your humility, who you are that has taken you far. I can imagine the challenge that you went through um, being to China for the first time, not even knowing how to speak the Chinese language, and still you spoke through your art. I mean, how did that go? Tell us about the experience. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was amazed in and uh, doing the presentation by one of the curators of the Shinda Art Museum. He was very fascinated by my work when it was projected on the on the screen, and they said I'm, yeah. I'm very young, and yes, uh, I've been able to understand uh, the watercolor and the the way I project some of the paintings, the the fishing boat. The yeah. poles and the ropes on the boats reminds them of the the Chinese calligraphy style oh, of yes. writing. Of writing, yes. So those are some of the that uh, uh, made them to collect those my four uh, paintings for their museum. Amazing. Amazing. So that, that's what I mentioned that the art can be used as a way of communicating between. My paintings for yes. So art can be used as a way of communication yeah. between two people, where through just the strokes of your brush, people yeah. were able to identify and connect with you on what you are trying to communicate. It's a powerful yeah. statement. Yes. Yeah. That is a powerful statement. There's a question so here from Marie from you. Uh, Marie is my wife here. And Marie is, Marie is asking you a question about James Town, if you don't mind. Um, to answer this very question because it's important for Ghanaians. He says, Jonathan, so how has the demolition of parts of Jamestown made you feel as you are one of the very few, if not the only one, who has really captured Jamestown in its originality? Now, will you keep these paintings as part of our history or do you intend to sell them? And that's a question from Marie, my wife. Unfortunately, I don't even have one of these. <laughs> with me. I've they all gone, are they? Sold. All. The only thing I have are the pictures and also some of the, <laughs> some of the reference pictures uh, I took. You took. Those yeah. nice and the yeah. sketches I made, which later I intend to do uh, oil versions of yeah. them. It, it is sad, but just to... It is sad, but the way it is. Now, this is, this is where... Let, 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 me, let me also add a follow-on question. Now, the government of Ghana okay. probably doesn't appreciate art that much. Or otherwise, he would have gone to the Ministry of Culture and Arts and even asked painters in Ghana to capture the scene before he, he, he even demolished it. Or asked about those who've got paintings of these memorable places so that we can also store them in our museums, just like the Chinese are doing. So it's all about the appreciation of yeah. art in our community. So a lot more probably needs to be done by us, the artists, in educating them. Maybe we should hold dialogues with the ministers. We should hold dialogues with the those in authority, those in power, to be able to talk about our stories as artists, the importance of art in society, so that they can appreciate what we do. Um, Are you still there? I'm very happy you have asked. Uh, yes. Good. I'm very happy you have asked this question. Yeah. But sometimes I don't want to blame the government so much okay also i don't want to blame the artist also so much but yes. here is the scenario uh in 2014 when i was invited to china and during the presentation the seminar they mentioned that the curator mentioned that the chinese government gave them the organizers okay. for this event 15 million rmb which is converted right at that time was two million dollars wow that's a lot of money that's a lot of money and the agenda was that they should collect different watercolor from around the world okay and i happens to be the only one also from africa wow so i got the chance to witness 
this project. Yes. And they are going to keep those works in their uh, museum. And every tourist, including me myself now, will I pay money to see it. I have to pay money to go inside. That's it. Now, now the same question comes here that if you tell an African president that give me two million, let's collect different artworks into our our national gallery. Yes. I've lost your, your video there. If you can add your video back, that would be great. Um, hello, Eric. Yes, I, I can I um I can hear you, but I can't see you. Same here. I'm wondering. Okay, let's carry on then. Um the same question goes to uh, a Ghanaian uh, the government here that can any government willingly give two million dollars that we should stock our national gallery with different art collections even from ghana here or africa so that our art gallery becomes or our art museum becomes a center for for an african art collections that when tourists comes they will be able to uh and see different be collecting the small small entry fee entry fee yes it is going to pose a lot of challenges because most of the leaders don't think beyond today that's true very well said so it is going to create a lot of political sense that how long are we going to do this thing and when do we get the money and all of that but in china if you to take them forever they have they have done it and by now six years down the line i'm sure they have made more than half of their their money yes. they invested in collecting those artworks but leaders, there's no time for them within the four years mandate to wait to do any project that will take long for them to get their money back and all of that. So we have a lot of education to do and a lot of planning with the, the nation needs to do for very, very true industry. Yes. Very, very true. So Jonathan, we're trying to get you back on the video. If you can work uh, something uh, out, that uh, would be great. Sure. But in the meantime, we're still talking about the fact that Jonathan has been able to reach far and wide with his artwork. Jonathan has been able to reach China, Korea, Turkey, France. He keeps going places, even to Canada and, and, and uh, Spain. And that's not just all. He's also educating those in Ghana as well. He's also giving out things for free for the benefit of the youth who are coming up. So as artists, we do not stop where we are we don't limit ourselves to just our local environment we should think global in all that we do the other conversation that i had with jonathan is that we should be able to have a dialogue with with our politicians we should be able to have a dialogue with those who are in leadership and in authority and be able to convey the message of the importance of art so that we set up things like national galleries to stock our artwork in so doing these galleries will help us in the long run to get revenue from those that actually enter into these galleries. So Jonathan is back and he'll carry on with the conversation. But what we are saying is that we should hold the conversation with those in government so that they see the economic benefits of what we bring them. So first of all, is there even any gallery, a national gallery in Ghana? Uh as it stands now, I learned they are renovating what we have at uh, Adabraka, and I don't know when they are going to finish. Okay. But we have the art center, which uh, that uh, tourists goes there. But for a bigger one, we don't have now. But for individuals like Artist Alliance, it's a good place. And same as uh, Nobuki Foundation, Artist Legon is also a very good place with their new ultra modern art gallery space. It's right. quite encouraging in the art industry here. That is really good to know. That is really good to know. So we shouldn't stop that conversation with the government to ensure that, you know, in some years to come, we'll have a well uh, renovated 
a well-built national gallery where we also charge people to go and see uh, what we've got in there and our culture and what we've got to bring as Africans. So Jonathan, we really thank you uh, this afternoon. We thank you for enlightening us about what your art is all about and the role that you're playing in society to make sure that the name of Ghana reaches far and wide. But I won't let you go now. Before you go, have you got any message to a young artist? Or let me phrase the question again. What advice would you give to your young self? Well, you need to be very humble and learn the, the rules of art. Yes. Because art can be very, very challenging as also wants to make it into your profession. You need a mentor to guide you through the process because they will have the, the experience. If you don't have a good guidelines, you may struggle in your own way to get to the to the top. So I encourage every young artist to keep practicing and also get a mentor who can guide him or her through her through the practice because the art journey is very uh, long and difficult yes. as well. So you need a good yes. mentorship in, in pursuing your art career and also educate yourself formally and non, non formal. Yeah. I, I like the way you've just put it because this applies to every creative person. You need to number one, be committed, find a mentor and educate yourself. These are the things that will let you go far and wide. Because without, yeah. when we say educate yourself, yeah. we don't mean just go to the classroom. As Jonathan said, educate yourself formally or informally. But whichever way, make sure that you practice your craft. You learn new ways of doing things. You learn how to be so good at your work that, you know, a company from South Korea will give you their watercolor <laughs> set. <laughs> and, and, and it's really good that you are, you've shown us that it's possible. And this is the yeah. purpose of this program. I want people from Africa to know that it is possible. It is not only those in the Western world that can achieve success with their art, but it is so possible for us as artists in Africa to showcase our work to the rest of the world because we've got some beautiful work in Africa. Yes, yes, yeah. I really love being an African, sincerely. Um, Definitely, um, same here. Around. Yeah. Same here, same here. So if we want to reach you and, and communicate with you, buy some of your artwork, where can we actually locate you? Well, uh, in my studio at ACP Estate in Accra, Ghana, or you can personally contact me through any of my face, uh, social media handles, uh, Jonathan Agri Studio, that's on Instagram, and then Jonathan Kweje yes. Agri on facebook yes okay. and then my email as well quadri and as uh, quadri 84 at gmail.com you can reach me and then i'll see what is available to sell because most of the times most of the paintings are oh, so it's gone. Wow. gone yeah wow. so, <laughs> so you may have to reach me to know what is available yeah very very well done jonathan and we appreciate you so much for spending time with us on two consecutive weeks you know, to thank talk you about thank you. your experience. We really appreciate you, Jonathan. Thank you. God bless you. God bless yeah. you. And good things to the family. Thank you. Will do. All right, then. So, guys, that is Jonathan right there. And I'm so glad that he let us into some of his secrets, you know, and his successes and his challenges and everything that he's gone through as an African artist. It is not easy being an African artist, but we do persevere and we do succeed. So those of you out there that are supporting us, I'll encourage all of you, especially in Africa, to patronize our work. And as you heard from Jonathan, you know, sometimes it's even difficult to get good brand of material to create the work that you do. How frustrating would that be? As I'm in the UK, I'm able to get whatever brand I want, provided I've got the money. I just go out there and I buy the material. And the work that I produce is brilliant. Look behind me. Now, this is a piece that I did during the very early stages of the pandemic. And I, 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 I call it, I think this one is called, ah, that's the pandemic one. It's called Faith Over Fear. And I painted people demonstrating how they cough into their elbow, uh, washing of hands under flowing water, and the shaking of, 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 of uh, the lack of, 
you know, of the shaking of hands, where people will use their elbow to shake instead of their hands to shake people. It was all to educate people about the pandemic and how you can actually deal with it. So through art, we are able to communicate a lot to our society and impact our society positively. I entreat the government of Ghana, the government of other African countries to patronize our work, understand the importance that art plays in our society. Don't just leave it to artists to struggle, but support us, allocate a budget for the culture and the arts to make sure that what we produce is preserved in our galleries, in our museums, so that they last long and our story is told for years to come. So for those of you who joined me today, I really appreciate you and I hope you've been blessed. I hope you've really enjoyed uh, this program. Do very well to follow me on Facebook, Eric Amwakwa Bwedu. Follow me on Instagram, Eric Amwakwa Bwedu. Follow me on, on, on YouTube as well and do well to subscribe to my channel. Click on that notification button so that each time I upload a new content, you are the first person to actually receive it. So God bless you, and I thank you so much. Have a wonderful week, and I'll have a fantastic artist again whom I'll be bringing your way next week. God bless you. Bye-bye.